Hello. The Lee Times received a letter from Mr. Cosmo Vinyl living in the USA's New York City. Mr. Vinyl is appealing to residents for photographs of local music venues from past decades for a project he's working on. Will Birch, author and one-time drummer with the Kurzel Flyers, is researching locally for the project and he spoke to me to explain what's going on. Hello, Will. So what actually is the project that you're doing? Um, Cosmo Vinyl, who um, now lives in New York, uh, came up with the idea of creating a fold-out map, more of an art project than a commercial exercise, uh, to reflect the um, events that occurred in South End and, and the, the surrounding area uh, back in the rock and roll days and in the, the 60s and 70s. A lot of um, influential groups came out of this area at the time, and South End was quite a happening place. So uh, Cosmo thought it'd be a good idea to have a map and with uh, 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 another friend, J J Julian Baum, who's a graphic designer, we are collecting the material and researching the topic so that the map can be made. Uh, where do you envisage the map ending up? What, do you mean the distribution of it? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know what Cosmo's got in mind, but he's quite a, um, He's quite a clever kind of um, communicator, let's say. Right. Um, back in back in the nineteen seventies, he he did um, press, as it were, for Ian Dury and the Blockheads, and worked with them. And he also then went on to work with Clash during right. the, the heyday of their career. So he was a, a very good at sort of influencing the media, let's say. He was their PR guru. He was a PR, yeah, yeah, that was one of his skills, but he had lots of other skills as well. He does paintings and he does artwork. He had a picture in the Royal Academy Summer Exhibition a couple of years ago. Um, he moves, moves around art circles and so forth and um, lives in New York. Probably very yeah. nice. Have you been out to visit him? Are you, are you close friends? I've seen him on the last two or three occasions He's come to London, and I, I've been going back. With, I've been going to New York fairly regularly for many years. Um, not in the last eighteen months, but prior to that, I go over annually for various reasons. Um, but and now I've never actually hooked up with Cosmo in New York, just because I don't know why. But he, we have met in London, of course. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so Cosmo, you know, he's an East Ender. And he, he's a little younger than me. Um, he didn't catch the 60s scene, but by the mid 70s, he was, well, he started working with Stiff Records around 1977. Oh, I... I think his first job, he, he, he makes the joke, he, he, um, he went there and asked if they had a job for him to the record company. But he said, I didn't know what the jobs were, but he just wanted to be involved. And he ended up as a roadie for Graham Parker and the Rumour, who had quite a success at the time. And uh, from there, he just went on. And so he loves this. He loves this whole area and the music that's come out of it. So he's a good person to make this happen. Julian's a great, great uh, graphic designer. And I suppose my role is on the ground, local research. And I'm old enough to remember most of the venues you know that were happening in the 60s and 70s so um here we are what exactly is it that you would like um people from the area or anyone who reads the, the letter or sees this video what exactly is it you would like them to do well what we're looking for is photographs really and um there are about 50 venues on our, when I say venues, that could be a, a club, a pub, a theatre, a cinema, a coffee bar, a record shop, and you know, a clothes shop. It places where things happened. Um, we've got about 50 on our list, of which we think about 15 or 20 are, are significant. And what we're looking for is photographs of the exteriors of these buildings. There's plenty of photographs about, of, about of, you know, such a, such a band on stage at the so-and-so bar or something, but they're, they're, they're a dime a dozen, you know, but what we're looking for is history, historic photographs from back in the day of some of these places. Um, Cosmo's been doing a lot of photo research and he's found quite a lot of them now. So he, 
we, we feel we've almost got enough, but there's a couple of very difficult ones to find. Um, there was a, let's say there was a, a bar, you know, the, the Palace Hotel on Pier Hill, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a bar in there before it became a, the hotel it is today. There was a bar in there called the Long Bar. It was also, well, it was called the Pier Bar. It was also referred to as Long Bar. And in the 1970s, during the sort of Teddy Boy revival, so the Teddy Boys, as you know, were in the 50s, but there was a big Teddy Boy scene in the 70s. Um, that was where the Teddy Boys hung out in the Long Bar. And that was where they played the music on the jukebox. And I believe there was some live performances there as well. Um, we don't have, we've got some shots of Teddy Boys in Long Bar, but we haven't got, well, and we've also got some photographs of Teddy Boys in and around South End on the seafront or in the high street, but we haven't got any photographs of Teddy Boys in the doorway of the Long Bar. That's what we would really like. So that's an example. Hard to find, might not exist. Um, there was also a um, little list here there was a club in Westcliff um, in Station Road almost opposite the um, uh, Westcliff rail station on the side on the uptown to London to the south of the, of right. the station uh, there was a club there in the 60s called the night scene a lot of famous people appeared there like Gene Vincent played there the rock and roll star Georgie Fame lots lots of well-known names from the time although the building is still there and I, I believe it's been a pub in recent years um, we don't have any photographs of, of the night scene club. Uh, that was a significant one. Just up the road from the night scene, there was another club called the Studio Club, which has been uh, demolished now. But uh, that was a happening place in the mid-60s. We have got photographs of the exterior of that. I think we're okay for that one. But if anybody's got anything, we'd love to see it. Because people did take photographs of each other when they were out and about, you know, during that kind of modern rocker period. Yeah, yeah. And, and later, right through the punk scene, people were quite, um, shall we say, um, don't want to upset anybody, but <laughs> people liked looking the way they looked and they, you know, they were, they, there were a lot of photos were taken and I sometimes figure they might still be knocking around. Yeah. Um, there was a pub in Leon C on the London Road called the Elms, it's still there, yeah. uh, but back in the day it was called, I think it was called the Elm Hotel. And that was a popular venue, mainly with local bands, although some national, uh, national names did play there from time to time. But that it was mainly where local groups had residences in the week, on the weeknights in the mid to late 1960s, the Elm. So there's three examples of places that we would like photographs of, and there may be more. Um, we do uh, get involved in social media. So for example, there's a Facebook group called The Shrubbery, which is uh, all about the shrubbery coffee bar that used to be uh, in South End years ago. And there are one or two other similar sites. So we've gone and joined up there and occasionally we post little uh, pleas, if you like, for have you got a picture of. And we're getting a bit of response gradually. We're also going through some of the um, South End newspapers that um, are being held. Um, Rayleigh Library, for example, has a collection of binders of the South End Standard and the South End Pictorial. Um, a lot of that stuff ended up in the skip, I think. You know, if you go to some of these publishers and say, have you got that photo? Oh no, you know, it went in the skip, um, unfortunately. And, and, and I dare, well, I, I think some libraries are a little bit guilty of chucking their stuff out as well. But we've, we've you know, Rayleigh uh, Library have been very helpful and I've been going through a binder of South End Standards haven't found anything yet, but I do know there are some photographs in there because I remember them. <laughs> I mean, for example, in 1963, the Beatles played, well, they played twice at South End Odeon in 63. Uh, the first one, in, I think it was in April, they, they headlined, co headlined with Roy Orbison, um, and they were just starting to have hit records. So they were, they were very famous. But by the end of that year, they were absolutely massive. You know, mm. she loves you, I want to hold your hand. Sure. And th I remember um, the, the queue for tickets, which went on sale on a Sunday morning. Uh, the queue started forming on the Friday night and people would camp out outside the um, Odeon. And I used to go down there and count the number of people in the queue and put it in a little book. And so on the Thursday afternoon, there'd be like six girls would be there. 
and then by Friday morning, they would camp overnight under blankets. You know, this was in, it must have been, I th the gig was in November, so this must have been around October, quite nippy. Um, by, by the following morning, by the Friday morning, you know, there were 100 people in the queue. By the Saturday, there was a 1,000 people. And when they opened the ticket office on a Sunday morning, well, they just sold out immediately, obviously. Um, but there were pictures of that in the South End Standard, which I'm trying to uh, locate. And then having located the, uh, good photographs, then, of course, the question becomes getting permission to use them, to publish them from either the photographer as a professional or might be owned by uh, you know, private individuals. Mm. So we're looking, we're looking for pictures. Mm. Anything good that happened in South End musically is what we want, but it's the exteriors of buildings that are really we crave. Right. See some of that architecture. <laughs> so rather than putting forward a, a specific list, the appeal is just the architecture of whatever anybody remembers as a music venue and you'll pick your way through whatever comes in is that kind of the idea yeah it's the it's, it's the architect it's the look of the building but obviously there'll be a story with each one and what happened there because people say well that looks like a pub told me about it mm. so you say well that's where you know the paramounts played before they became Procol Harum or Dr Feelgood where, where, when they played on Canvey Island Eddie and the Hot Rods all these quite well-known groups that have come out of this area, my own group, Curzel Flyers. There's a few names there. Um, but really, we want to see people, the people, you know, the fans who are involved, or even the musicians, at these venues, outside these venues. You know, unloading a van would be fantastic, but that's a bit of a dream. But um, you never yeah. know. A popular pub was the Cricketers, which later became Club Riga, mm. now called The Venue. I mean, yep. lots of well-known bands played there, Fleetwood Mac and uh, Status Quo, and even David Bowie played uh, in 1970. Just, just he'd had the hit record with um, uh, Space Oddity, and then he'd kind of taken a little bit of a dive before he came back with his next one. But he did a, he did, I remember I went to it in 1970, he did a show at the Cricketers. So all these really interesting things happened in this area. And I think when I when I think a lot about Dr. Feelgood, particularly, who sort of mates of mine, um, it was the proximity of London that made it possible for some of these groups to get a foothold in London and therefore attract the music, the, the record companies, let's say, or the managers and agents. Mm. I mean, obviously, there were scenes in Liverpool and Birmingham and all around the country, but being so close, being an hour away from London, was a fantastic opportunity to get in, do the show and get out, you know, without getting too bogged down by what was going on in London. You could be, you'd be there and not there, as it were. Mm. It was a great period. Yeah, I'd love to have gone to that Bowie show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was very odd. It was, he, he, it was very odd. I mean, I, I don't remember too much about it. I, I made a note in my diary when I used to make a note of all the gigs I went to. I don't think I was terribly impressed. He seemed to me at the time to be a sort of an art, uh, an art project, you know, in development. He hadn't quite figured out what he was going to do. Of course, he went on to do great stuff. But um, also that year, 1970, he appeared in Southend twice that year. Um, in the, uh, what it would have been, I don't know, the August, September of uh, 1970 there was an event held in the field in um in um i want to say rochford quite near where the big gets go supermarket is now near the airport um it was a benefit concert um and um now who was it in it was it it, it it was in aid of shelter for homeless people benefit concert and the guy who organized it who was a local teacher i think um he got quite a lot of big names come along, or big names of the day. I mean, the group I was in at the time, we, we were on the, at the bottom of the but we opened it, the show, but had David Bowie, they had uh, the Edgar Broughton Band, and they had, you know, heavy rock groups from that period. But that was a fantastic day. And uh, all I remember about David Bowie was, he was sat cross-legged on a rug with an acoustic guitar singing something like, Memory of a Free Festival, I think the song was called. The one I was just and, uh, but, I, but, but where are the photographs? You know, I mean, there was a thousand people there. 
somebody must have been clicking away at Edgar Broughton or whoever the other the other groups were. Um, you know those sort of progressive groups of that period. Can't remember their names now. But anyway, it was a it was an afternoon, an early evening event in in a field in sort of Eastwood Way, a shelter benefit concert. You know, there's been a lot of interesting st stuff's happened in the area over the years. And you're going to put it all together, put it on a map, and then come up with something to do with that map. Is that the idea? Exactly, exactly. Well, I have no idea what Cosmo's got in mind, but he's done this kind of thing before. I mean, there was a big Ian Deary art exhibition in London in, uh, I think, 2012 at uh, the uh, Royal College of Art um, that Cosmo came over for, and he was involved in that. And in fact, there is uh, has there is currently a, an Ian Dury exhibition going around at the moment, run by the Thames Group of Artists, and it was at the Beecroft up until last week. It did a few weeks there, yeah. and it opens in Canterbury this Saturday. In fact, I'm going down on Saturday to do an interview with um, Ian Dury's uh, daughter Jemima. Wow. And um, I am only mentioning this well because Dury has the Dury has a connection to South End as well, mm -hmm. in that he as Everybody who knows of him knows he was a, a, a polio victim and he contracted polio in the West Cliff swimming baths okay. on the seafront. It's a casino now, you know what I mean, but it was the West Cliff swimming baths. And in 1949, when he was seven years old, he came down for the day and, and uh, the water was infected. Well, polio was rife in the 1940s, as you know. He contracted polio, but he was a he was a, Jerry was a bit of a South Ender, so. Uh, Cosmo, um, as I say, worked with Jury and the Blockhead, so he he knows a lot about them and their connection to South End, and I'm sure Cosmo will find a way of getting this map out there uh, when it's ready, but it could be another year or two before we're ready to launch it. And uh, maybe it'll become a book, I don't know. Yeah, well, I very much look forward to whatever the end result is. We'll certainly do what we can to help and get the message out. Is there going to be a website or any of that sort of stuff? There'll definitely be some web presence for the map or yeah. whatever it's going to be called. I'm sure he's got a wacky name up his sleeve. And it includes Canvey Island as well. So there's lot, lots to read and lots to look at when it comes out. Brilliant. Well, I'll have the email address that people can send contacts to uh, to Cosmo on the, the bottom of this. And... Uh, um, as you go along, keep us in touch if you don't mind, and we'll see if we can keep supporting you. It'd be great. Thank you for your help with our appeal, Mark. Thank you very much. <laughs>